Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 56 days to go into your GCSE exam, so keep up the hard work. And today we're going to focus on the topic of volume over frustrum. So that's whenever you've got perhaps a pyramid and you chop off the top and you, what's left is then a frustrum. And we're going to have to find the volume of those. Likewise, it could be a cone and we've chopped off the top. And again, we're finding the volume of that frustrum, what's left. So we're going to be looking at uh, volume of pyramids and cones as part of this today. So it'll be quite useful if you need a recap of that to go back a couple of days and I went through those topics as well. But in this video, we're going to be looking at the volume over frustrum. So I'm going to go through some questions and there'll be some for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. But let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at finding the volume of a frustrum. So here we've got a question that says, show us the frustrum of a cone that had a perpendicular height of 20 centimetres. So we've got a cone that had a height of 20 centimetres. The top's been chopped off and what's left is the frustrum. And we've been asked to find the volume of this frustrum. So we want to find the volume of this part here. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to find the volume of the whole cone. So what was the cone? So the cone would have went up to a height up here and then down again. So this would have been the cone. It's not the best of sketches, but that's the cone. And the cone had a height of 20 centimetres. So the height of the cone was 20 centimetres. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume of that whole cone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume of the bit that was chopped off. So that's a smaller cone. And then we'll take that away to see what's left to find the volume of the frustrum. So let's do that. So let's find the volume of the whole cone. So the cone had a perpendicular height of 20 centimetres, as we can see. The radius of the base of the cone is 8 centimetres. So let's find the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone is equal to third pi r squared h. And think back to our video on the volume of the cone. That was the volume of the cone. A third pi r squared times the height. So in other words, a third the area of the base times the perpendicular height. So to find the volume of the large cone, the whole cone, we would do a third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of the base, which is 8 squared, and then multiplied by the height of the cone, which is 20. And when we do that, we'll find the volume of the whole cone to begin with. And then in a minute, we'll then work out the volume of the smaller cone that was chopped off and then see what's left. So when we do that, we get an answer off on our calculator. We'll type in a third, multiplied by pi, multiplied by 8 squared, multiplied by 20. And when we do that, we get an answer of 1,280 over 3 pi, or as a decimal number, 1,340.4128. 6, 6, and so on, centimetres cubed. So that would have been the volume of the whole cone. But as you can see, the top's been chopped off. So we want to find the volume of this smaller cone that's been chopped off. So in terms of this smaller cone, if we have a look at it, the radius of the base of this cone is 4 centimetres. The height of this cone that was removed, well, the height of the whole thing was 20. We've got 10 centimetres left, so the height of this cone would have been 10 centimetres. So we can then find the volume of this smaller cone that was removed. So let's find the volume of that cone. So we're going to do a third multiplied by pi r squared h. That's a third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of the base, which is 4 squared, multiplied by the height of that cone, which is 10. And when we do that, we get our answer of 160 over 3 pi, or 167.551608 and so on, centimetres cubed. So we've got the volume of the whole cone, we've got the volume of the part that was removed, so if we take them away, we can then see what's left for the volume of the frustrum. So we're going to do 1340, 0.412866 subtract 167.551608 and when we do that we get an answer of 1172.861258 and so on centimeters cubed and you could round that let's round it to 1172.86 centimeters cubed to two decimal places and that's it. So what we done was we found the volume of the whole cone, we worked at the volume of the part that was removed, we took them away then to find the volume of the frustrum, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one for you to try now yourself. So we've got shown as the frustrum of a cone, so you can see that's what's left after the top of the cone's been removed, that had a perpendicular height of 18 centimetres. Find the volume of the frustrum. So I want you to find the volume of this frustrum. So press pause and find the volume of this frustrum. Okay, so if I was doing this question, I would consider the whole cone. So I'd find the volume of the whole cone because we were told the perpendicular height of the cone. The perpendicular height of the cone was 18 centimetres. So we've got 18 centimetres being the height of the cone, 18 centimetres. And we know the top of it's been removed. And what's left then is this frustrum, which has got a height of 12 centimetres. So in other words, the top six centimetres were removed. That's got a height of six centimetres there. Okay, so if I wanted to find the volume of this frustrum, I'd find the volume of the whole cone. I'd find the volume of the part that was removed, and I would take them away to find the volume of the frustrum. So let's do that. So let's find the volume of the whole cone, so the large cone. So remember, the volume is equal to a third multiplied by pi, multiplied by the radius squared, multiplied by the height. So that'll be equal to, for the large cone, that'll be a third 
multiplied by pi, multiplied by the radius squared, so it's going to be 15 squared, multiplied by the height of the whole thing, which is 18. And when we do that, we get the volume of the whole cone, which would be 1,350 pi, or as a decimal number, 4,241.150082, and so on, centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of the whole cone, 4,241.150082, and so on, centimeters cubed, or 1,350 pi. Now let's find the volume of the part of the cone that was removed. So this top part here. I remember that's a smaller cone that's removed. So the volume of this cone, the volume will be equal to, the volume will be equal to a third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height. So that'll be a third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of this smaller cone is five, so five squared multiplied by the height of that part, which is six, because the whole cone had a height of 18 centimeters. The height of the frustrum that's left is 12 centimeters. So the height of the cone that was removed at the top of the cone would be six centimeters, so multiply by six. And when we do that, we get an answer of 50 pi, or 157.0796327, and so on, centimeters cubed. So we've got the volume of the whole cone, we've got the volume of this small part that was removed, so if we take them away, we can then find the volume of the frustrum, so let's do that. And when we do that, we get 1,300 pi, or 4,086.07045 centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of that frustrum, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Now this one's a bit different than the ones we were given previously because the ones we were given previously we were told the height of the original shape, the original cone or the original pyramid, but this time we haven't. But whenever you consider a cone or a pyramid and you chop the top off, then what has happened is the bit that is chopped off will be mathematically similar. So one's an enlargement of the other. So this bit that's chopped off, so this top bit, will be mathematically similar to the whole pyramid. And that's going to help us. So let's have a look at this question. So we've got this frustrum and we want to find the volume of this frustrum. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do two sketches up here. So I've just sketched two pyramids. This large one would have been the original pyramid. And this little pyramid is the one that we're removing. So let's sketch each of them. And we know that they're mathematically similar one's an enlargement of the other. So let's start off with the original one. We know that the base is 9 by 12, so we're going to do 9 centimetres that way, and 12 centimetres that way, so that's the base, 9 by 12. In terms of the smaller one that's removed, the pyramid at the top that's removed, we've got that's 3 centimetres by 4 centimetres, so that's 3 centimetres by 4 centimetres. So the scale factor here, you can see the scale factor is 3, so it's 3 times larger. Now in terms of the height, we want to find the height of these pyramids, because that would be really useful in terms of finding their volumes, so then we can then take them away to find the volume of the frustrum. Now we know that whenever we take off the smaller pyramid, what's left is 6 centimetres. So whenever we chop off the smaller pyramid, when we chop this pyramid off this larger pyramid, what's left is 6 centimetres. So I'm going to call the height of the smaller one h, and I'm going to call the height of the larger one, well it's 3 times larger because the scale factor of enlargement is 3, so if the height of the smaller one is h, the height of the uh, taller one will be 3h, that would be because it's 3 times larger. So if this for instance was 20 centimetres, that would be 60 centimetres and so on because it's 3 times larger. Now we know the height of the frustrum is 6 centimetres, and that's what's left whenever you remove the smaller pyramid from the larger one. So whenever you chop it and we remove this pyramid from this one, we're left with 6 centimetres. So if we take our 3h, the height of the original pyramid, and we take away the height of the pyramid that's removed, so if we do 3h take away h, that's equal to 2h. Now that's going to have to equal 6 centimetres, because that's what's left whenever we take away the smaller pyramid, we're left with 6 centimetres. So it means that 2h is equal to 6 centimetres. So 2h equals 6, that's an equation, because we we do 3h, take away h, that's 2h, and that's equal to 6 centimetres. And if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get h is equal to 3. So it means that h is equal to 3, so the height of this pyramid is 3 centimetres, and the height of this one will be 3h, so that'll be 9 centimetres. And if we take the 3 centimetres from the 9 centimetres, that'll leave us with the 6 centimetres for the frustrum. So that's fantastic. We now know for each pyramid the dimensions for the base, 9 centimetres by 12 centimetres, and we know the height of this one is 9 centimetres, and the height of this one, well, it's 3 by 4 centimetres in terms of the base, and the height of is 3 centimetres. So we can either find the volume of the larger pyramid, the volume of the smaller pyramid, and take them away to find the volume of the frustrum. So let's do that. So in terms of the larger pyramid, the volume is equal to a third, the area of the base times the height. So it's going to be a third. The area of the base, so it's going to be 9 times 12 because it's a rectangle, so a third of 9 times 12 multiplied by the height of that pyramid, which is 9. And that's equal to 324 centimetres cubed. So the volume of this pyramid is 324 centimetres cubed. So the volume of the smaller one now. So for the smaller one, the volume again is equal to a third, the area of the base times the height. So it's going to be a third, the area of the base, so it's a rectangle, 3 times 4, so it's going to be 3 times 4, 
multiply by the height of the pyramid, which is 3. So if we do a third of 3 times 4 times 3, well, 3 times 4 is 12. A third of that is equal to 4 times 3 would be 12. So that's equal to 12 centimeters cubed. So the volume of this one is 12 centimeters cubed. So if we do 324, take away 12, that's equal to 312 centimeters cubed. So that's it. So the volume of this first room is 312 centimeters cubed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this is a question for you to try. And the question says, find the volume of the frustrum. So here we've got a frustrum and it was a square base pyramid and the top's been chopped off. So this is the frustrum that's left after the top of a square base pyramid has been removed. And I want you to find the volume of this frustrum. So feel free to press pause now and find the volume of this frustrum. Okay, so if I was to do this question, the first thing I would do is I would do a sketch. So I would sketch the original square base pyramid. So in terms of the original square base pyramid, well, in terms of its base, it would be 24 centimetres by 24 centimetres, so 24 centimetres by 24 centimetres. So they're the dimensions of the base of the larger square base pyramid. Now, obviously, a smaller square base pyramid's been removed, so the top of it's been chopped off, so that's the square base pyramid's been removed. And in terms of that square base pyramid that's been removed, its base would be 16 centimetres by 16 centimetres, so 16 centimetres centimeters by 16 centimeters and in terms of the scale factor of enlargement well to get from 16 to 24 that's 1.5 times bigger if we do 24 divided by 16 24 divided by 16 is 1.5 so the scale factor of enlargement is 1.5 Okay, now we know the height of the frustrum. The height of the frustrum is 30 centimetres. So we want to find ideally the height of the square base pyramid that's removed, but also the original square base pyramid, the height of the original square base pyramid. So let's call the height of the one that's removed h. So let's call that h. Well, the larger square base pyramid is 1.5 times bigger because if you do 24 divided by 16, that gives you the scale factor of enlargement, which is 1.5. So if the height of the smaller one is h, so the height of the larger one would be 1.5 h because it's 1.5 times bigger. So we multiply the height of the smaller one by 1.5, we get the height of the large one, which is 1.5 h. So that means the height of the original square base pyramid would be 1.5 h. But the height of the bit removed is h. So that means that 30 centimetres, what's left, plus the h, the bit that's removed, would have to be equal to 1.5 h, the whole thing. So it means if we do h plus 30 centimetres, that's going to be equal to 1.5 h. In other words, the height of the bit removed plus the height of what's left will be equal to the height of the whole thing. So h plus 30 is equal to 1.5 h. So if we take away h and take away h, we get 30 centimetres is equal to 0.5 h because 1.5 h take away 1 h would be 0.5 h now we just need to divide by 0.5 and divide by 0.5 and that would give us 30 divided by 0.5 would be 60 and that's equal to h so it means the h is equal to 60 so it means the height of this pyramid here would be 60 centimeters 60 times 1.5 would be 90 so the height of this one is 90 centimeters so the height of this one is 90 centimeters and the height of this one is 60 centimeters so let's write that down the height of this one is 60 centimeters and the height of this one is 90 centimeters because 60 times 1.5 would be 90 so that's fantastic we now work out the volume of the whole square base pyramid we can work out the volume of the square base pyramid that's removed and then when we take them away we'll find the volume of the frustrum so let's do that okay so in terms of the larger square base pyramid the original square base pyramid the volume would be equal to a third the area of the base times the height so it's going to be a third the area of the base was a square so we're going to do 24 multiplied by 24 and we're then going to times that by the height which is equal to 90 centimeters so if we do a third of 24 squared or 24 times 24 times 90 that's equal to 17,280 centimeters cubed so that's the volume of the whole square base pyramid to begin with now let's find the volume of the bit that's removed so the volume of the bit that's removed the volume will be equal to a third the area of the base times the height a third the area of the base was a square base pyramid so we're going to do 16 times 16 to get the area of that base 16 multiplied by 16 and we're going to multiply that by the height of that pyramid which is 60 so multiply by 60 and when we do that let's see what we get and that's equal to 5120 centimeters cubed so we now know the volume of the whole original pyramid we've got the volume of the bit that's removed so if we do 17,280 subtract 5,120 that's going to be the volume of the frustrum what's left that's equal to 12,160 centimeters cubed and that's it and if you got that well done and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to find the volume of a frustrum i hope you found it very useful if you have found it useful please like and subscribe to the youtube channel and just remember to be doing stuff like your five a day so obviously with 56 days to go into your gcse maths exam be doing your foundation plus your higher and even your higher plus five a day is not little enough to approach to have a big impact in terms of your competence but keep up the good work and i'll see you tomorrow cheers bye